Welcome back, kiddos. For tonight's story, we're going to Africa, where the Yoruba people tell the tale while a tortoise shell, once smooth as glass, became the rough crooked shape that we recognize today. I put some links in this video so you can learn more about the Yoruba later. Right now, it's story time. A long, long time ago, a terrible famine hit an ancient animal kingdom. It had not rained for two whole years and all of the crops were dying. The animals hoped and prayed for an end to the terrible drought, but the sky was no longer able to gather enough clouds and the rains did not come. Iapa, the cunning tortoise, lived on the outskirts of the village with his wife and two sons. The famine was very bad and was already having a devastating effect on all the animals, so Iapa could no longer trick them into parting with what little rations of food they possessed. One morning, very tired and hungry, Iyapa left his house with the intention of searching the marketplace for scraps of food. But there was no food in the market, and so the tortoise remained as hungry as ever. However, just as the tortoise was about to return home, he saw Ehoro, the rabbit, hopping towards the marketplace. There was something strange about Ehoro. He looked radiant, well fed, and full of exuberance. Iyapa was curious. Why is Ehoro looking so well I, I am so hungry? He thought. So he approached the rabbit with his head bowed as if he were in mourning. Then he began to cry. <laughs> when Ehoro saw Iyapa, he rushed to meet him. Eh, what is it, my friend? Asked the kindly rabbit. Iyapa answered. My, my father is ill in hospital. My, my wife is expecting our third child, but, but she is so hungry that I fear for her health. <laughs> and only last night, I heard that my mother-in-law is dying of starvation because she doesn't have food, enough food to eat. I feel terrible because nothing I can do. <laughs> Ehoro was suspicious because it was well known that the tortoise was very sly and could not always be trusted. But Iyapa was an excellent performer and soon won the rabbit's sympathy. Hmm, leave me an ori book after dark. I will have these find my dust. I just hope I don't regret this. Soon it was night and Iyapa set out into the darkness to find Ehoro waiting at the brook. Once they had said their hellos, Hello! Yeah, hello friend! Both animals made their way into the deep forest, the rabbit leading the way while the tortoise followed closely behind. Before long, they came to a narrow path that led to an open clearing among the trees in the middle of the forest. The rabbit stopped and pulled the tortoise to his side. The tortoise nodded in agreement and the rabbit cupped his hands around his mouth and began to sing. Suddenly, a long white rope descended from the sky. Ehoro grabbed the rope and began to climb. After hesitating for just a moment, Yapa also took a hold of the rope and followed the rabbit up into the night sky. The rabbit and the tortoise climbed and climbed until they got to the very top of the rope where there was a magnificent fluffy cloud shaped like a door. The door opened and there stood a kindly old rabbit with a smile upon her face. Nee, butter! exclaimed Ehoro in a joyful voice as he embraced the old rabbit. This is my friend Iyapa who has come for supper. Ehoro's mother held out her hand and gave the tortoise a warm handshake. Nee, come in and meet us. I just at the table. The sight that met Iyapa's eyes made him gasp. There was a large table laden with the most sumptuous foods he had ever seen. There were exotic fruits and fresh fish of all types, marinated cooked with herbs. There was also rice and yam and mouth-watering soups. The hungry tortoise dug in immediately and ate everything that he could get his hands on. Don't eat too much, Ehoro cautioned. I am not be able to climb back down the rope and walk back to the village. The tortoise continued to eat until eventually he slumped back in his chair and gazed sheepishly around the room, his belly protruding like a huge balloon. After they had rested for a while, Ehoro decided that it was time to return home. Iyapa rubbed his large belly, got to his feet very slowly, and made his way to the door. Aren't you going to take some food back home for your family? Ehoro asked Iyapa. No, thank you, replied Iyapa. I am too full in my belly to carry any food with me. 
And so, Ehoro's mother let down the rope and the rabbit and the tortoise descended back into the forest and went their separate ways home. When Iaba got home, his family were still sleeping, so he crept into his bed, covered himself up with his blanket, and fell into a deep sleep for 12 hours. When he eventually awoke, Iapa was very hungry. I need food. I need food and I need it now. It was then that Iapa had an idea. I will go back to Ehoro's house while he's still at work. I will think of some lies to tell his mother when she lets down the rope and I will fill my belly once again. When Iapa arrived at the open space in the forest, he cleared his throat and began to sing the same song that Ehoro had sung the previous night. <laughs> the trouble was, Iapa had a rather husky voice, and the song did not sound as beautiful or as heartfelt as when it was sung by Ehoro. Yeah, this doesn't sound like my son, thought Ehoro's mother. The old rabbit hesitated for a moment, but eventually she decided to let down the rope. Yeah, I guess he has caught a cold, she thought as she lowered the rope into the clearing below. The mischievous turtle was delighted to see the rope fall to the ground, and he quickly grabbed it with both hands and began to climb as fast as he could. Iapa was halfway up the rope when he heard a voice shouting from the forest below. Yeah, hey, where do you think you're going? Come back down at once! Yeah. It was a horror, and he sounded very angry. Mother, we've been tricked! shouted the rabbit. Still, Iapa continued to climb the rope, his mind full of thoughts of the feast awaiting him above. Ero called out to his mother again, but again nothing happened, and so the tortoise continued to climb out the ropes into the clouds. Ero cleared his throat, took a very deep breath, and began to sing to his mother up in the clouds. Ia ya ta kun waleo, alu chan chan ki chan. Ia ya ta kun waleo, alu chan chan ki chan. When Ehoro's mother heard her son's voice, she exclaimed, not that he's my son, but who was the first caller? The old rabbit peeped through the clouds to see what was happening below. That was when she saw the tortoise climbing up the rope towards her. Yeah, mother! shouted a horror from far below. Cut the rope! The old rabbit fetched a large carving knife Pshing! and began to cut at the rope. At first, it seemed as if the rope was made of iron and that the knife would have no effect at all. But Ehoro's mother continued to hack the rope with all her might, and soon there was only a very thin strand left for the tortoise to hang on to. Then the old rabbit gave the rope a final hack with the knife, and... Woo! Iyaba went tumbling down towards the forest below. The winds carried Iyaba back and forth, tossing him around in the sky until he landed heavily on his back in the forest. Eww. Unfortunately for him, the only thing to cushion his fall was a big rock that was sitting on the forest floor. When he landed on the rock, Iapa's shell cracked in so many places that it ended up looking like a jigsaw puzzle. The tortoise awoke many hours later. He was very dazed, but he was able to move and found that he was not in very much pain after all. But his shell remained like a jigsaw puzzle and would never again return to the lovely smooth round shape it was before. And that kiddos is the story of how the tortoise lost his beautiful shell through his own gluttony and deception. I hope you all have fun today listening to the story. If you'd like to hear more of that beautiful song a horror sung to his mother, you can listen to it at the link below before you go to bed. And so with another story concluded, I bid all you kiddos Odaro Kosi La Ala Toda and God bless.